crabs are a diverse group of animals, and this was evident as well back in the Cretaceous, although the origins of their morphological diversity, as is the case in other highly successful groups, are obscured by the scarcity of transitional fossils or reliable occurrences which could place them in proper phylogenetic context. Brachiura, the true crabs, are one of the most species-rich and important groups of crustaceans, with nearly 7,000 extant and 3,000 extinct species being known of. Yet, their evolutionary history and phylogenetic relationships remain enigmatic. In addition, although the tropics hold much of the world's biodiversity today and in the past, very little is known about the early tropical history of fossil crustaceans, which has created an unfortunate gap in their understanding. Said to limit his knowledge is down to many factors, including enhanced tropical rock weathering, thick vegetation making access difficult, as well as the simple fact that there are currently fewer scientists working in tropical paleontology compared to modern high latitudes. However, recent finds from both Colombia and the US have revealed that crabs were indeed present in these regions, and were in many ways incredibly unusual, with some of them looking unlike anything alive today. One of these taxa was initially discovered in 2005 by Javier Luque, a paleontologist from Colombia and now a research fellow at Harvard University. Then an undergraduate, he was exploring the fossil-rich rocks of Colombia's Boyaca department when he stumbled upon an outcrop full of finely detailed fossil arthropods. He and his colleagues eventually collected over a hundred specimens, many of them being extremely well preserved, which would go on to reveal a great deal about them. This region of Colombia where the fossils were found belongs to the Cretaceous Churavita group, which dates to the Upper Cenomanian to the Lower Turonian ages, 95 to 90 million years ago in the Middle Cretaceous, with other specimens later being discovered from the frontier formation in the United States from the state of Wyoming. The numerous fossils found in these regions revealed a novel and exceptionally preserved species that possessed a unique body plan, helping to illuminate the early disparity of the group and the origins of novel forms. Named Calichimera perplexa in 2019, the name is derived from the ancient Greek prefix Kali, meaning beautiful, and Chimera coming from a composite mythological animal, a reference to the bizarre form and characteristics of the genus, with the species name Perplexa also relating to this. Crabs are usually thought of as having broad carapaces, strong, robust claws, as well as small eyes with long eye stalks and a small tail tucked under their body. But, as seen with crabs overall, some forms, in this case Calichimera, defies all of these so-called crabby features, and indicates that our definition of what makes a crab a crab is not all that set in stone. Measuring around 2-3 cm in diameter, about the size of a quarter, they possessed large, unprotected compound eyes with no sockets, which will be discussed in more detail later, as well as bent claws, leg-like mouthparts, and a long, fusiform body and exposed tail. Going over these features more in detail shows that these animals were nectonic, active swimmers, and that as adults, they resembled typical crab larval stages. This suggests that some, long since extinct crabs may have retained some of their larval characteristics into adulthood, amplifying them to fill a unique niche. This is an evolutionary process called heterochrony, a change to the timing or rate of development relative to an ancestor, as well as being an example of neoteny, the retention of juvenile characteristics. The diverse forms of the crustacean body plan are strongly regulated by homeobox containing developmental genes, and are models both by their developments, environments, and ecology. Calichimera superficially resembles a larval stage known as a megalopa, the transitional and or final larval stage between the swimming planktonic zoea larva and the first benthic juvenile crab stage. Calichimera, based on its anatomy, was clearly not a zoea stage, however, they do share characteristics said characteristics being mentioned earlier in the video, although they'll continue to be discussed more in detail. One of these characteristics were their peculiar, or shapes, paddle-like limbs, which appear to be convergent with the swimming digging limbs of other euarthropods, such as the appendages of some eurypterids, colloquially referred to as sea scorpions, whirligig beetles, and deep-sea swimming isopods. Although many of these structures are not homologous, arising from different body segments and limbs, they are analogous as specialised multi-elemental modules suited for efficient swimming and or digging. Interestingly, after the disappearance of paddle legs eurypterids by the late Permian around 250 million years ago, no fossil arthropod, at least so far described, has evolved such highly modified, enlarged and flattened thoracic limbs until the evolution of Calichimera more than 95 million years ago. Swimming in most adult decapocrustaceans, such as shrimps and lobsters, 
is achieved via paddling with bimerous pleopods and or the rapid flexion of the muscular pleon and caudal fan. The loss of a muscular pleon in the ancestors of crabs, as well as the reduction of the pleon, pleopods and caudal fan in most groups, precludes them from active swimming in the same manner. Highly modified puzzle and shovel-like legs have evolved independently at least seven times in crabs, with them being shaped by similar lifestyles, resulting in notable convergences of form and function. Calichimera therefore appears to be structurally suited for active pelagic swimming, although it is possible that they could have been facultative back borrowers, as seen in some extant swimming crabs. A crab-like, aka a carcinized body plan has evolved independently at least four times among Anamurans, a group of decapod crustaceans which are the sister group to the true crabs, Brachiura, which includes animals like king crabs and some hermit crabs. Some lineages also independently decarcinized or lost the crab-like body form, which is typically associated with the evolution of fossil reality in groups such as mole and frog crabs. The superficial resemblance of Calichimera to other decarcinized crabs, particularly Ranonoids and Paleochoristids, might initially suggest a fossorial lifestyle associated with burrowing, although many of the traits of Calichimera are unlike any other decarcinized crabs, which implies that their niche was very different. From what we've gathered about them, it is apparent to assume that these crabs were open water pelagic animals, and this was further assisted by one of the most notable features being their massive eyes. Their incredible preservation means that their structure and overall composition is in many ways intact, which has helped in better understanding crabs overall and their evolution. True crabs are one of the few groups of arthropods to independently evolve several different types of compound eye, reflecting their broad range of lifestyles, and this was readily apparent in these crabs as well. The eyes of C. perplexa are very large, 16% the size of their entire body, and for a comparison, that's the equivalent of a person with eyes the size of soccer balls. The fossils also preserve in remarkable detail their optic and corneal elements, being the first known post-Paleozoic arthropods to preserve both. They also lacked orbits, orbital fissures, or any meaningful protective structure, so they must have therefore been permanently exposed, even under times of stress. Having such big and unprotected eyes implies they were not only exposed at all times, but that they would have required a large investment of energy and resources to maintain them, and thus they must have relied considerably on their vision. To assess their development and in turn what it meant for these crabs, researchers analysed over 1,000 specimens of living and extinct crabs, representing 15 extant brachiurans across nine families, to better determine their ecology and habits. Collection and analysis of said data took over a decade to compile, although the results were worth it, as it paid off in properly showcasing just how bizarre these animals were. The specimens involved in the study, to get a comprehensive range of body forms, were analysed at both their different stages of development, range of habitats, lifestyles and bathymetric ranges. Measuring the dimensions of the eye and bodies of these crab specimens throughout their growth cycles, found that unlike other crab species, C. perplexa retains their large eyes throughout their development. The study also showed that C. perplexa showed the fastest optical growth rate of the sample, similar to more highly visual and predatory species. Although growth rates of the eyes did not directly correlate with habitat depth, fast growth rates were found to be common among crabs that are known to engage in highly visual behaviours such as active predation, as opposed to scavenging or visual courtship. The average interomatizu angle, the IOA in the eyes of C. perplexa, is 0.57 degrees, indicating the visual acuity was comparable to that of modern predatory arthropods. Compound eyes often incorporate an acute zone of large facets, which are capable of increased resolution as well. Forward pointing acute zones, which allow small prey to be detected at greater distances, are found in animals like praying mantises, and in insects that engage in seeking behaviours and forward flights like in bees and butterflies. Similar patterns are also present in C. perplexa, where facets with larger average diameters are more prevalent in the centre of the eye than closer to the accrediting edge. The average value of the eye parameter of these crabs was also relatively low at 0.34, consistent with them inhabiting shallow and well-lit environments. It was also found that they had remarkably sharp vision for a crab, with their compound eyes having a large amount of hexagonal facets. Animals that possess compound eyes essentially have a pixelated view of the world, with each facet delivering a separate pixel. Therefore, the higher the pixel count, the sharper the vision. 
from observing the ice of Superplexa, it was found that their eyesight was comparable to known clear-eyed predators like dragonflies and mantis shrimps, which are well known for being highly efficient and active predators. Therefore, their growth series, in combination with their eye parameters, angles, and level of complexity, coupled with their body plan, demonstrates that they were highly visual, shallow water predators that could move at great speed given their size. Kali Chimera shared their environment with a range of Comma and Coridian shrimp, which they would have therefore fed on, making them top predators, at least for animals around their size. The discovery of Kali Chimera has shown and subsequently blurred the boundaries of how a crab is defined. Regardless of their position in crab phylogenetics, they appear to occupy an intermediate position between the earliest podotreme brachyurans and the more derived podotremes, filling in a major gap in the evolutionary history of true crabs. Kelly Chimera may well be neither a brachyuran or an anamuran, but rather its own infraorder, Kelly Chimeridia, although their classification as a novel lineage of brachyurans appears to be more likely. They evolved during a time when crabs as a whole were undergoing a major adaptive radiation that included extraordinary morphological experimentation before settling into the more familiar body forms today. This is known as the Cretaceous Crab Revolution, aptly named due to nearly 80% of the higher clades being first known from this period of rapid radiation. Calichimera is truly a perplexing genus and stands out so much from their relatives that they have been referred to as the Platypus of the crab world. Although our understanding of the origins of several true crab lineages is far from settled, these findings provide alternative hypotheses about the early evolution of several groups, and that the tropics overall have been neglected in terms of their key role in the origins and diversification for many different groups. Because of this, and through the description of these discussed crabs, there is evidently a lot more these areas have to offer, and only more discoveries by those intrepid enough to attempt the efforts will reveal more. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals, and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.